friends, I'm Akash, and today I'll be talking about the six different types of dictionaries. The Webster's Third New International Dictionary, Unabridged. Yeah, that that book contains nearly every single word in the in the in the dictionary and well in the English language overall. All of them were contained in this big book, this big dictionary. And once again it was it was a huge hit. And now the Scripps National Spelling Bee is using a version of the Webster's Third New International Dictionary as the gold standard and every single word you'll hear Dr. Bailey say and you know pronounce and give all the information about all of that comes straight from this book which is in my opinion really really awesome and pretty cool so as you can see we have six dictionaries um, as you can see we have the primary dictionary off here to the side and then the elementary dictionary coming through to the intermediate, the collegiate, of obviously meant for college students, and then the big Webster's Third New International Dictionary unabridged. We also have the visual dictionary. I'll actually talk about that in just a bit. But yeah, <laughs> this is really awesome. Oh, and by the way, there is also one more dictionary that actually we don't have here physically, but that's because it's an online dictionary. At merriam-webster.com, you have a lot of words, but I'm only saying a lot because that's really like 20,000, I think. And then that's actually pretty insignificant compared to the nearly 500,000, nearly half a million words that are located in unabridged.merriam.com webster.com which if you're wondering is a subscription based premium edition of uh, the actual Merriam-Webster dictionary and new words are getting updated and put into the dictionaries um, every single year and this and uh, what I, and remember when I said that a modified version of this dictionary was being used as the gold standard by national by the National Spelling Bee that modified version is the online dictionary the Scripps National Spelling Bee loves using new online words because seriously those words are harder than ever and sometimes they have been used to knock out spellers during the final rounds of the competition which is um kind of fascinating um and also pretty cool with a lot of different awesome like really really hard words and yeah it, it's it's really awesome so um yeah, one more thing that I'm going to talk about is the sort of general differences between these five major books. So starting, of course, with the primary dictionary and, of course, uh, going to the elementary and the intermediate and all the way up through here to the big Webster's Third, you may have noticed that the size of the dictionaries is getting larger which means that there are more words being put into each of these dictionaries starting with the primary dictionary pretty insignificant compared to the elementary the intermediate the collegiate and then the sort of big brother the collegiate and also known as Webster's third <laughs> and yeah it is very much like a family here and also, therefore, the the letter, the size of the letters will be smaller and smaller and smaller. Like in the case of Webster's Third, there will be like this small, <laughs> like the word champion is written like that. <laughs> it, yeah, it's really small. And another change is that um, if you notice, if you're noticing the um, the uh, age group for which all of these books are directed towards is varying starting from the primary book uh, starting from the primary dictionary which is meant for ages four through seven however i actually started reading i actually started learning this book when i was only two years old and then the elementary dictionary is meant for ages eight through eleven yeah, the intermediate is meant for uh, ages 11 through 14. The collegiate is, of course, uh, <laughs> meant for college students. And then Webster's Third is definitely meant for adults only because, I mean, that, that's just a lot, a lot of words. So, yeah, let's just jump right into it with the primary dictionary. 
Uh, let me go over here. Here we go. Here we have the primary dictionary. This is the first book. And as you can see, it's the illustrations by Ruth Heller. Pretty cool. Hats off to her for making such a great book. And also the first awesome dictionary that I have ever read. It's great. So I will be using one word to uh, compare between all of these other dictionaries. And guess what that word is? Champion, of course, because, of course, everybody loves, wants to be a champion one day, of course, in spelling. So why not we do the word champion? So the word champion is a noun and a verb. And it has, as you can see, it has very short and simple definitions. See, a champion is the winner of a competition. The short form of champion is champ. You see? And now, um, you can see here, you have this, and also, um, you have a nice little uh, tip here. The contest to decide a champion is called a championship. Our team won the hockey championship. See, you get it? Yeah, so that's how, so that is how the primary dictionary. Um, and now, let's go to the elementary dictionary. Hold a minute, if I uh, just, Put that back off to the side for a quick moment. And as I open up the elementary dictionary, um, it has, as you can see, if we go over to the word champion, where is it? Uh, it's got to be somewhere. Okay, so let me quickly close the primary book. Here, here, this is the elementary dictionary. As you can see, we have the word champion. And although in the primary book we had very simple definitions, here we have a tiny bit more detailed uh, definitions for each of the words. And the sentences are now just phrases, as you can see. And we also have one, two, three definitions. We have more than one definition for the word champion. And we, of course, we also have a verb here now labeled two champion as the first was called one champion. And now champ was mentioned in the primary dictionary as the shortened form of champion. But now it's its own right here, two champ. Uh, there's one champ, that's a uh, different. But two champ is now short for champion. Two, which is a person accepted is better than all others in a sport or in a game of skill, which is exactly what it is. So that is uh, a dif the difference. It has slightly more, um, it has slightly more complex definitions. And now we move on to the intermediate dictionary. Let me move over here, and um, let's go ahead and find this here. Um, if I can, there we go. So the word champion is right over here. So as you can see now, we have even more, it's getting even more, what can I say? Yeah, more uh, detailed. A person who, and now this is the first definition of for a person who fights or speaks for another person. And also we have pronunciations. Yep, we have pronunciation symbols, and over here we have a quick guide to let you know about um, what all the regular symbols mean. So now you can take that into account and pronounce the word champion correctly. And this is, of course, very helpful because now you know how to pronounce the word in the first place. So that is about the an intermediate dictionary. Now we move on to the collegiate. Okay, so as you can see right here, it's Merriam-Webster, 11th edition of the collegiate dictionary. And as you can see now, we have um, these little, these over here. Um, these are supposed to help you find the letters, which is very much helpful, which is, and it's really good for, you know, spotting the right word if you want to go to a specific letter. So as you can see, we have champion. And a major difference here is that now we have the language of origin here. It's it's like, as you can see, it's really small now. Um, but as you can see, we have the language of origin of all of these words. And now we have the, now, Instead of saying that champion is someone who won, okay, that's there, but however, it will list that champion really means warrior, 
and now, which means it's referencing you to go to other sections in order to find the uh, the definition of champion to be the, what the definition of warrior, and that can also reference to something else. So yeah, um, another thing is that of course it's getting even more detailed here. And now we have four definitions off of the, in the first one, which is a noun, and in the second one, which is a verb, and it says VT here, which I'm guessing is transitive verb, um, which means to challenge. So now they're telling you to go to the word challenge, which if you're wondering is over here. Anyway, um, as you can see, it also means to advocate. See, it's giving you more and more chances to go to different words in order to save some more space. And, um, yeah. So, once again, it's getting even more uh, detailed here. And, um, yeah. And now, we finished up with the Collegiate Dictionary. And here goes. I'll actually move over here for this one because... I mean, yeah, it's the Webster's Third New International Dictionary, which is basically, first you have the pronunciation symbols, of course, that's been there in nearly every single one of the books. And now, if I can find it, oh, there we go. Here it is. So, the word champion is over here. And now, the language of origin, yeah, one thing is, you can easily tell that the amount that these that the letters have become even smaller. I can barely see it myself. This is very, very, very small. As you can see, it reads more at Kemp. So it's actually it the sort of referencing is coming everywhere, not only just definition, but also the language of origin, the etymology is telling you to look at the etymology for Kemp to find out the full history of the word champion. And, and as you can see, it has even more of these reminders to uh, sort of reference other words. In this case, it's telling you to go to the word combatant, too, which, um, yeah, it's, and not just that, it's just, it's giving you all the information. Not just that, it's, um, it's giving you different forms of a definition. It says 4A, B is for 4B, and then 4D, 4 yeah, not just that though, it's finally telling you another definition, five, or champion oak. Apparently, it is another term for a red oak, and yet again, there isn't just two champions like we saw in the other books, in fact, there's not even three, four senses of the word champion, and we have a word champion less that which is its own entry or its own word. It's actually showing you obsolete and archaic forms, which means they aren't used anymore or they've just gotten too out of hand. Um, yeah, it says obs, which is OBS for obsolete. And then VAR, they're now telling you variants as well, which um, it's, it's getting even more complicated. All, just a lot of information about all of the words every single piece of information and now that we're done with Webster's third new international dictionary we have one more which cannot really be compared with any of these other five it's the visual dictionary of course that I'm talking about here for example I'm just gonna flip to this page over here it's it's dissecting Africa um, and it's not it's not like apparently there's a section there are sections in both collegiate and Webster's third for geographical terms and biological terms. However, this is what it's going to do. It's pretty clever. It gives you a map of Africa and shows you every single one of the countries, which in my opinion helps you to remember what, where, the, you know, for example, these countries even more. Like for example, this is Libya. You have to know this. You can learn not only just the word itself and what it means, Libya is a country. And it also um, gives you the cap, uh, where is it? Gives you the capital Tripoli, of course. And it also gives you how it looks like. 
that helps you to remember words even better and it helps you to have a sort of visual representation a visual version of that word in your mind which makes it even more easier to understand words and in this case country names and yeah hold on and that's ha Oof. and uh, hold on let me just arrange all these and yeah that's basically all of these six dictionaries that we have here of course the unabridged dictionary is there too and, and that's of course online the online version is there too i really hope you enjoyed a quick overview of all of these six dictionaries that um the six types of dictionaries that Marion webster has created and yeah it's it's really awesome just looking at all of these so yeah um thanks so much for watching this video if you like all my videos make sure to subscribe and don't forget to share this video with your friends once again thanks so much for watching love you Akash.